The General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon has been one of the most popular fighter aircraft ever since it was first introduced in the late 1970s. This legendary all-weather multi-role fighter has been adopted by over 20 nations and received several upgrades. But few know that its original designers made an improved version with twice the firepower, range, and speed. It was called the F-16XL. The aircraft featured a cranked aero delta wing that could carry up to 27 weapons under its wings and twice the fuel storage, and was considered one of the most promising fourth-generation fighters on the planet. There was a lot at stake when it entered the Air Force's Enhanced Tactical Fighter Competition, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the McDonnell Douglas F-15E Strike Eagle. F-16 Fighting Falcon Revisited Few aircraft in history have reached legendary status as the F-16 Fighting Falcon. Introduced in the United States in 1978, the aircraft has since made its way to the air forces of several countries, such as Germany, Belgium, Portugal, Japan, Turkey, Thailand, and even Venezuela. The F-16 has reached global acclaim as an outstanding all-weather multi-role aircraft because of its unique array of features, such as its bubble canopy, its ejection seat with G-force reduction, and its fly-by-wire control system. The aircraft has also been upgraded and adapted to complete various missions involving electronic warfare, dogfighting, or ground support throughout the decades. Overall, it has flown over 400,000 combat sorties in several global conflicts, surpassing 19 million flight hours, and has remained the most acquired fixed-wing aircraft in military service to this day, with more than 5,000 units produced. Still, merely one year before the F-16's introduction to the world, the team behind its development began working on another version of the aircraft that was meant to be more powerful and lethal. The F-16 first took to the skies in 1974, and three years later, its design team began working on Model 400, or F-16 Scamp, which stood for Supersonic Cruise and Maneuver Prototype. The objective behind the program was to develop a prototype that could be used to experiment with supersonic cruising at a reduced cost. The team did not intend to sell another production fighter. Instead, lead designer Harry Hilliker sought to study the possibilities and application of supersonic transport technologies, or SST, to military aircraft. The program was centered around the effects of laminar airflow at supersonic speeds, along with the causes and effects of sonic booms. Although the F-16 was equipped with powerful afterburners that could increase the thrust that its engine produced to break the sound barrier, the risk was too high. Using afterburners depleted the aircraft's fuel quite quickly, drastically reducing its estimated operational range. The design team knew that they had to make some changes to the standard F-16 Fighting Falcon airframe. If the aircraft could keep its afterburners long enough to maintain its supersonic speed without exhausting its fuel storage, the aircraft would cover more ground in less time and still return to base before fuel was depleted. The men then conducted several theoretical studies about the ideal airframe and wing shape for over two years, leading to a partnership with NASA's Langley Research Center to experiment on different models. Using General Dynamics' own funds for Internal Research and Development, or IRAD, Hilliker and his team concluded that a cranked arrow wing shape would allow improved lift, range, and maneuverability. Thus, the F-16 Model 400 was born. Upgrades With the additional 25% lift increase, the improved F-16 would be easier to control at high and slow speeds. The new design had a 50-degree angle near the root of the wing for enhanced supersonic speeds, and a 70-degree angle where the wing extended for subsonic flights. These modifications resulted in twice the surface area of the standard F-16 wings, standing four feet longer than expected. But thanks to the more than 3,600 hours of NASA wind tunnel tests, the team managed to apply the modifications without any drag increase in the airframe. However, there were some cons. The moving wingtips and vertical tail for roll control later proved inadequate for low speeds or high angles of attack. Additionally, there was no provision for wingtip-mounted missiles, but because the intent was not to build a tactical fighter, the team was glad the design increased the aircraft's fuel storage and range. 
Although the new aircraft mainly was based on the F-16's airframe, the changes were substantial. Two fuselage sections were added at the front and back. Overall length was increased by 58 inches, and the additional cranked arrow wings were made of a special carbon fiber that was lighter by almost 600 pounds. However, the new model still weighed 3,000 pounds more than the Fighting Falcon. It came to 22,000 pounds when empty, and 48,000 when at maximum takeoff weight. Wingspan was 34 feet, and height stood at almost 18 feet. The wings give it twice the fuel capacity of the Fighting Falcon, and room for up to 27 hardpoints. This upgrade allowed the model to carry 16 750-pound missiles on its underwing stations, two Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles on the wing tips, and four AIM-120 medium-range missiles on semi-recessed positions. The remaining hardpoints were multi-purpose, and could be used for fuel stores and equipment like low-altitude navigation and targeting equipment. In addition, its main armament was a single 20mm M61 Vulcan Gatling cannon for close engagements. All in all, the model offered double the firepower and carrying capabilities of the F-16 Fighting Falcon. Two prototypes were eventually completed, and by the summer of 1979, the team was confident that the F-16 Scamp had a better range at all speeds when compared to the standard fixed-wing F-16. The U.S. Air Force warmly welcomed the prototype and became a partner of the SCAMP program, providing funds for two additional prototypes and over 15 Fighting Falcons for conversion. They wanted this aircraft to be a next-generation fighter, but there were other competitors in the market, and it would need to fight its way to the top. Model 400 was then dubbed F-16XL. Enhanced Tactical Fighter Competition In March of 1981, the U.S. Air Force announced the ETF, or Enhanced Tactical Fighter Program, to find a replacement for the F-111 Aardvark aircraft. Specifications included a fighter capable of deep interdiction missions without the support of other aircraft or jamming support. General Dynamics Director David Randall Kent was confident enough in the work Hilliker's team did that he decided to submit the experimental F-16XL, pitching it against the McDonnell Douglas F-15E Strike Eagle. The F-15E was also a modified version of an established aircraft, in this case the F-15 Eagle. However, there were differences. While the F-16XL had significant contrast when it came to airframe and aerodynamics with the standard F-16, the F-15E Strike Eagle was only a modified F-15D two-seat trainer with the backstation altered to support ground attack equipment. General Dynamics and the Air Force began tests in 1982. The F-16XL's General Electric F-110GE 100 turbofan engine offered 17,100 pounds of power and up to 29,000 with an afterburner engaged. The aircraft achieved a maximum speed of 1,400 miles per hour, a cruise speed of 600 miles per hour, and a service ceiling of 50,000 feet, while its rate of climb reached 62,000 feet per minute. The results were unquestionable. The XL delivered twice the range, speed, and firepower of the standard F-16. During a 1983 interview with Air Force Magazine, Program Director of General Dynamics Randall Kent said, quote, The F-16 XL flight test program has conclusively demonstrated that the XL performs as predicted. This performance level represents a significant increase in mission capability for USAF. Coupling this with the affordability and low risk of the F-16 XL presents USAF with a viable way to increase mission capability while simultaneously growing to a 40-wing TAC force structure. The XL had everything the Air Force wanted for their tactical fighter program. However, the F-15E Strike Eagle was eventually declared the winner. It was stated that the Strike Eagle would be easier to produce than the XL. Existing F-15s would require fewer modifications to convert into Strike Eagles, while existing F-16s would require more work, money, and time to become XLs. Another reason that helped the Strike Eagle was its twin-engine configuration, as it increased the aircraft's survivability during missions. If one engine was damaged, the crew could still return to safety with one engine after engaging in close ground combat. NASA Aeronautical Research After the contract was awarded to the F-15E, 
The prototypes of the F-16XL were sent to Edwards Air Force Base in California and remained in storage until 1988, when NASA took them in for research. The first prototype was fitted with an active suction titanium glove that encased the left wing and was taken to Ames Dryden Flight Research Facility. NASA used it to test sonic boom, engine noise, and takeoff performance. The second prototype was fitted with a new General Electric engine and unexpectedly achieved supercruise when it reached Mach 1.1 at 20,000 feet. NASA finished tests in 1999, and the two prototypes were sent to the Air Force Flight Center Museum, where one of them remains on display to this day. Meanwhile, the F-16 continues to successfully serve in several nations, including the United States. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to watch more historical content about aircraft and epic battles. And let us know your thoughts on the impressive arsenal of the promising F-16XL in the comments below.